Welcome back, friends. I hope you're having a great time. I definitely am. When I stepped back from my piece last time, I saw that I needed to add a few more values. Remember we talked about having about five different darks and lights in our piece. There can be many, many more values in your work, but for these purposes, we're just going to talk about five. I could work on a portrait forever and never stop. Luckily, I have my two children, Tom and Marie, who say stop, <laughs> and they take the work away from me so I don't obsess. Also, when I stepped back earlier, I compared my values on the face as well. I'm going to add my third value now. Remember we made indications of where the darkest shadows would be? We're going to refer back to that in the next episode. But here on the ear, because it's also rounded, I'm going to go from medium, and I'm going to press a little harder to go down to here. Right now, I'm using my 4B pencil. Juggling again. I'm fixing a bit of my line here. When I stepped back, I saw that my muzzle was too light, still too light. Let's add another layer. Again, my strokes are going with the form of the horse. I forgot to put in this shadow before. This is a very common shadow that this eye will cast onto the head. While I'm at the forelock, I'm just gonna add a few lines for the forelock. You know, do stuff while you're there. If you see a dark that you're doing, or any kind of value, and you notice it in another part of your drawing, it's good to skip to that area and do it while you're thinking about it. Remember when I added our shadows in the beginning, didn't they look so dark? But now we're at this point in the drawing and I have to darken those shadows. While I'm doing this, I'd like to talk to you about never throwing away your work. About 40 years ago, when I was a young artist and I was painting landscapes, I had a stack of art in my art room that I planned to throw away. 
And my two sisters came in and they said, what are those? And I said, well, oh, I'm throwing those away. And they said, can we take them? And I said, sure. And recently I got to see a couple of them and humbly, they were very good. <laughs> so remember, never throw away your work. Again, the imp important area, the folds around the nostril. Nostril usually casts a shadow here. And all these little touches will make your portrait a way above average. I want you to challenge yourself. See how many values you can see when you're looking at something. Isn't it exciting how he's coming to life? We want to have good values on the easel and off. Another way to darken your value is to cross hatch. You can reach for a softer pencil to give you a darker line, or you can go over your, the lines you've drawn in a different direction. So earlier, I had gone this way. So I'm going to go this, I'm going to go up and down now. And then I'm going to go diagonally. So I'm working down in this area now, and I look up and I'm like, oh, forgot this area of the buckle. And this is not dark enough. Always, always comparing. Don't forget to step back, take a look at it from a distance. And not forgetting that this is very soft. We're not drawing concrete. So we want to we want to capture the softness of the horse as well. I see this area of the eye is much darker than I have it. And this is a very common shadow here in front of the ear. Again, revisit the mane a little bit. And let's take a look at our neck. 
Ah, forgot to put the midtones in there, didn't I? I'm gra grabbing one of my H pencils. And here is where I'm going to begin to use my eraser. A little more dark down the neck. Again, stroke, lighter, 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 lighter. Let's get that looking very round. This can, be, this can become darker. And because my hand is smudging my paper, I'm going to take a break and wash my hands. But first, I'm going to use my kneaded eraser to clean it up. And to remove some of that pencil I just put in and where some smudges have occurred on the piece. Now it's a good time to step back and look at our work again. Earlier we talked about turning our work upside down, putting it in front of a large mirror, we're taking a picture with our phone. But I'd like to tell you about another way. You can hold a small mirror up to your work and check it this way. When we were on vacation, when my kids were small, there was a street artist who was making portraits. And he could do a portrait in 15 minutes. And while he was working, he held a small round mirror up to his work and checked it constantly. He was amazing. I loved watching him work. There's so much talent in the world. When we come back, we're going to talk about the darkest darks, the lightest lights, and the magic of highlights. See you soon. 